as soon as you have a new listing, mm -hmm. they want you to be successful. So they'll put you in the front of the list. Mm -hmm. If you have a new, like, yeah, if you put I a, know that. If you put no a listing, about that. Wow. yeah, if you create a new listing today, you'll be at the front of the list if somebody looks up Houston. Wow. That's why your first couple of days are really important. So that's why when you first get started, we bring our prices down. We make sure the first couple of reviews are A1 mm -hmm. because if you mess it up and you get to the back of the list, it's really hard to get back up front. What's up, Bag Talk family? Today we have a very special edition episode. Not only because it's our 50th episode, came a long way, Nooski. That's a fact. But we're sitting here with two young legends in the short-term rental space. We have Serge Gaba and Steph Edmiston. Nooski, how you feel about this one, bro? I'm excited. So honestly, I know I'm gonna learn a lot personally from you two, because y'all obviously been killing it, right? So before we get into it, we want to give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves, talk about how you guys became friends and your journey. So let's kick it off. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank y'all for having us. Congratulations on the 50th episode. Thank it's really you, big, really big. Thank y'all both for what y'all do for the community. Appreciate that. Yeah, so Steph and I, we've known each other since 2014. Uh, we're both Ice Cold Brothers of Alpha Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So we met in 2014. Um, we became business partners in 2019. And ever since then, we've been doing business and trying to figure out how we take over. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Yeah. Stephon Edmondson, thank you again, guys, for having us. Happy to be here, man. Congratulations also. Um, but yeah, Serge hit it right over the head. We've been friends forever, became business partners. Uh, we do a number of different things besides this as well. I'm sure we'll get into that rest of the video, but yeah. we just work really well together and we're just trying to get to the bag like y'all. <laughs> yeah. Bag talk, girls, man. Yeah, bag talk, yes, sir, yes, sir. You're ready, you're ready. Now, I've been be seeing y'all all over New York, all over social media and everything. Like, I've been hearing a lot of good things. Like, so you want to just tell the people like some of the businesses you guys are into right now? Yeah, for sure. So we're into real estate, short term and long term real estate. We have a travel company together. Mm -hmm. I know you do some some stuff with cars, a couple other things as well. And then of course we also work corporate. We were talking about this a little bit. Yep. I work at Accenture, do strategy consulting there. So anything else I miss? Yeah, like she, like you said, travel company. Um, I I have a couple other businesses. I do. I also throw parties. Um, you know, me and Serge have done a couple of events together. We're actually doing something in Martha's Vineyard for the fourth. You guys want to come Oh, that's down. fire. It's there you go. Fire. It's fire. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, part, like, we just like to go play. We like to go places we want to go to and not have to pay for it, long story short. <laughs> nah, that's fire. So fire. Uh, but, yeah, I work at WeWork right now. I'm in purchasing. Uh -huh. um, so I've been there about four years. So, yeah, man. So yeah, We're doing a lot of things. Basically, the one thing I just called, right, because we were obviously talking about it, but they didn't hear about this. So you guys obviously have corporate jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys are young, so I know you guys have life outside of work, too. Yeah. But that life also includes other businesses. So it kind of gets all jumbled up together, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you guys balance that, too? Because I think that's a big key. When you're trying to be successful, you have so many different things that you want to get at or get at. How does that work for y'all? I, I, honestly, me, my, I might be a little different than him, but personally, I just don't sleep a lot. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, like... I, I really try to plan my schedule out from start to finish too. So like I, I have a Google calendar and what I like to do is I like sending like little reminders of myself in like 50 to 30 minute increments. So like I'll have my regular schedule for my job, meetings, things like that. And then I'll like, if I have something to do for like winners only or if I have to do something that I know I have to do for like our website with real estate, mm -hmm. like I'll make little mental notes and it'll click, oh, I know exactly what I need to do and then I'll do it at that time and I just will stay disciplined to it. That's a power mm -hmm. now, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. yes, sir. How about you, bro? How do you deal with that? Yeah, 100%. Same thing, kind of balancing, categorizing everything. And then you make time for what's important for you, for sure. So we use our nine to five to fuel our businesses. That's and okay. then the goal is to use our businesses to fuel the next generation and our families. Yeah, that's deep that's right amazing. there. Well said. That's amazing. And, and just tell the people too, like where y'all from? Yeah, so I grew up, spent a little bit of time in Newark, New Jersey, Allentown, Pennsylvania. So those are two areas I'm from. Oh. From the Bronx, New York. Shout out to X, shout out to X. Next, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, Uptown. That's actually dope. No, nah, that's fire. That's fire. Yeah. So basically, today we promised y'all we're about to give you guys some heat when it comes to the real estate market, right? But before we get started with that, I know we have like legit rookies watching this. Mm -hmm. So can you guys explain the difference between long-term rental and short-term rental? I feel like when we say those terms, people might get confused. So a quick explanation. One. Yeah. So the difference is long-term rental, you're typically renting for a year or plus time frame. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, for long-term rentals, you're purchasing something and then you're renting it out to one person for a long period of time. Short-term rental is a little bit shorter of a term. You're renting out as little as a day to sometimes you can rent it out. We have some travel nurses that stay with us for months at a time. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's under a year, short-term rental, long-term rental is a year plus. Got you. 
And when it comes to short-term rental, right? What do you guys look for versus long-term? Like, because obviously location matters, right? Like, when, if you're looking at something for over a year time period, it might be like, yeah, I'm gonna look in a spot that has all four seasons, right? Because it doesn't matter. But short-term, you might be like, I want something where it's only warm because I want to hit that summer season. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, it depends on where you're. It depends on where you're at and location. I mean, we we we're in Houston right now, and we like to tackle the medical district. So, I mean, regardless when you think about it, like doctors and medical patients are always going to need to be there no matter the season. And Houston doesn't really get cold, but even if it did, people are still going to need surgeries, right? And there's mm-hmm. other there's other little tactics. Like I know people who tackle um, like Army and Navy bases. Like regardless, people in the military still need to be able to see their families no matter if it's hot or cold. So it just depends on if you find a niche that works for you and then just attacking that market and going head on. Cool, cool. So so I'm wondering, like, did y'all start with a long-term rental unit or did y'all go straight to short-term rentals? Yeah, so I have some long-term rentals. I started with long-term, but together we started with short-term rentals. Yeah, yeah. Actually. It's the real estate guru right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how, how long have you been in the game? Then you said long-term rental was your first one. So when was that? That was 2017. Got you. And then how long did it take you to transition into the whole, you know, both actually? Because you do both now, right? Long yeah. and short. So how long did that take? Yeah. So we started short term 2019. Yeah. So two years was the transition time. I was in long term rentals for two years and then came over to the short term rental side. But short term rentals is the right answer. Right. They profit, they're so much more profitable, two to three times more cash flow than long term rentals. So that's why we transitioned over. And faster. And you don't have to own it. Yeah. So mm. Different goals. Just different goals. Yeah. So then, so then, like, all right. So for somebody who's who's watching right now and they're just getting started, like they're like starting from fresh, they don't know anything. What's the first thing they have to have in order? Like, what what kind of things did you make sure you had in order? Maybe like an amount of money or whatever it might be, like before you get into that short term rental space. Yeah, I mean, we, for I mean, especially for me, I didn't really I knew about it, like short term rentals, but like I, we kind of like for me, we kind of just figured it out as we went. Mm-hmm. So like we. We liked Houston a lot, and we did our research on like on like the market and like why people go to visit Houston and things like that. And then we just kind of like just did our research and figured out like how we could like convince people to like work with us. Yeah. Um. So I mean, honestly, I would suggest people to just do your research, pick a place that you think has like a high volume of like tourism, and just see if it makes sense. You could use something as simple as Air DNA, pay fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, and just figure out like how much the going rate is how much, like, does it make sense for you? So, like, I was, like, we didn't do that for real, for real, honestly, at, at very first. Now we do. So I always suggest people to just do your research to see if it makes sense for you. And that website you said is Air DNA. Air DNA. Yeah. Air DNA. So when it came down to, like, actually checking out the place, right? Because I know Bigger Pockets talks about a lot of different things, which is a whole real estate platform itself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, yo, go check the spot out. Like, actually go walk into the city. Sometimes go to a barbershop, see what the neighborhood looks like. So yeah, did y'all do that as well? I know you said the first time you didn't, but now do you guys do that? Or is it just more so the website that you rely on for the whole research part of it? Yeah, 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 yeah I mean. Yeah, Houston, we did, we went down there the first time. Yeah. So uh, we had a brother down there. We went down there to speak to him and, and kind of learn a little bit about the market. So when we first got started, we were in Houston. Mm-hmm. We checked out the area. Now we don't check out every unit, but back then for our first unit, we, we, we went down there. Shout out to Brian. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Brian, that's our, that's our OG, man. Yeah, that's the guy we were talking about a little bit earlier. Okay, mm-hmm. got you, got you. Oh, that's yeah. your mentor? Yeah. That's, that's, our mentor. that's yeah, my mentor. Like, I was just in Dallas. Um, I saw that. Over the weekend. I saw that, actually. But, like, I mean, we've never. I've never been to Dallas. I don't know if he has, but, like, for new places, like, sometimes it kind of makes sense to just to make that jump. Houston, mm-hmm. we don't really have to do that because we right. know Houston so well now. We already have units down there. Right. But, like, for Dallas, like, we were more comfortable with, you know, just me going down there. Um, while he was in Chicago, and we're always we're just on the phone all day. I'm just telling him what I like, what I don't like, and then we just make a decision if we like the spot or not. So we're gonna move forward with it. So like when you go to a place like that, and you're checking it out. What are some things you're actually looking for? Like so, tell tell people what they should be looking for when they go to visit an area to spec. Like you know, scope it out. Yeah. So the the one that we're look, we're gonna move forward with in Dallas. Um, is in the medical district. So like we have had a lot of success with the nurses, with the people that need um, surgeries, things like that. So it was a good location, um, right in the heart of the medical district. So location was big, and it's like eight minutes away from downtown Dallas. Mm-hmm. So it's like just it's an easier sell mm-hmm. than if it's like if the Airbnb is like twenty minutes out of like everything that like our clients would want to do. So location was big for us, like the quality of living there. So like the amenities, so like if, we, if it's a building that's like really nice, really well maintained, 
um, there's a pool, a gym, like it's just the easier sell. Like when you look for a hotel or when you're looking for an Airbnb yourself, you look for like all the things that come with it, right? Yeah. So it's an easier sell. You're gonna go in there and be like, yo, this has A, B, C, and D. Like how many times you'd be like, no, we need a house with a pool when you're traveling somewhere. <laughs> right, so, right, 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 right. People wanna be comfortable where they're staying. So we're looking at the same thing. We're looking at it as if we're traveling, cause we travel a lot, like where are we gonna wanna stay? And nice. where can we sell it? So that's how we look at it. So when it came down to that part, right? Obviously, you you said hospital and medical kind of field, right? Yeah. So why did you guys decide to actually go with that? Obviously, I mean, it makes sense because nurses, obviously, we travel nurses, and that's an industry I feel like that would never run out, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. did you guys have background in that earlier? Or is that like is that where you guys had like education with? You guys knew people there that told you to go in that industry, or was it just random? Yeah. So our mentor kind of put us on Brian. Oh, he was okay. like, you know, when you're looking at places. Make sure you find a place that also has business demand, right? So when you think about like the pandemic, when people stopped traveling for mm -hmm. leisure, mm -hmm. the businesses didn't stop traveling, the nurses right. were still traveling, the doctors were still traveling. So that's that's the second thing that we look at. Not only is there leisure demand, but there has to be business demand because that stuff is less likely to be impacted by natural disasters and things like that. That's so, dope. Uh, and that, made, that makes sense. So like, did you did you notice any type of slowdown through any of these economic changes going on right now? No, no. Things have been heating up for us lately. Right. Oh, God bless. <laughs> Things that's have been heating up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's actually pretty dope because you know what's funny? Like A lot of businesses have slowed down. We just saw a lot of layoffs happening, right? People are talking about, oh, the hotel industry might slow down. But for y'all, since you guys have actually the knowledge behind it and a mentor, right? Obviously, it works. So that makes me think, it's like, do you guys have a team behind you, right? Is it just you two that do everything? Or is it you guys have a team that kind of like, maybe a VA might help you out and do some bookings or something of that sort? Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, definitely have a team. Could not be successful with just us two. Impossible. Especially with everything we were just talking about balancing. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Definitely. Yeah, Impossible. so we, we try to outsource as much as we can. So we have cleaners on the ground. We have property managers on the ground. Um, we have our we have our boy Felix that just went down and is helping us out with stuff. Shout out to Fee. Yeah. So we have uh you know repairmen on the ground. So we definitely have a huge team behind us making everything happen behind the ground, and we would not be successful without our team for sure. It's impossible. Right. And how I guess how did you guys actually find those people? Right. Is it like referral basis? Just reading reviews? Like how how was that like? Yeah, we hundred percent always do referrals. Uh, we learn the hard way. If somebody's not vouching for you, you're not good. You're not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially with the cleaners. Yo, cleaners will make or break your business in the short term rental oh, space. Yeah. Oh my they god. It will make bro. or break your business. We had to learn that the hard way. So oh, yeah. we always go with referrals. Mm -hmm. And then after referrals, we even interview people, right? So we oh. always go through multiple people before we choose the person that we're gonna move forward with. So you gotta choose the right cleaner. Like, cause the thing about your cleaners is like, if they do a bad cleaning, mm -hmm. they might lose a hundred dollars, whatever you're paying them, right? But for us, if they do a bad cleaning and the guest cancels, that might be a couple thousand dollars for us. Yeah. Wow. Right. So we lost like a two thousand dollar booking once because our cleaner did a bad job, right? And nah, for her, nah. it was just like I was about you know, to say, what's a horror story? That's the horror story right there. Oh no, yeah. we got way more horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's light. That's light. I mean, think about it like this. I mean, like he said, like if you're going into an Airbnb and it's not fully cleaned and you're paying money for it, are you gonna yeah. wanna stay there? That's facts, no, that's facts. And that's then all. what they're gonna do is they're gonna leave a review. And that's all. That's your, That's your. the key to your success is the reviews, bro. If you don't get good reviews on Airbnb, you're not gonna last an algorithm, you're not gonna, bro, yeah. people are not gonna book you, like, you need the reviews. Yeah. So gotcha. true, so true. Like, and it's funny you mentioned the Airbnb platform, like, how did you guys get from even being, cause when you first enter this, this competition, are right, you gonna have the people that's rated high, they at the top, how'd mm -hmm. you get from being at the bottom of the list to even moving up that? Yeah, that's a good question. So when you first get listed, Airbnb puts you on the first page, like as soon as you start out. So now oh. it's up to you to mess it up and get to the back of the list. I did not but know so that. So like when someone searches, let's just say like, you know, you guys are starting in Houston, I search Airbnb Houston, you if guys you, would be the first ones to come up? No, no, so on the first if, you, page. Yeah, if we're new, right? So yeah. if, as soon as you have a new listing, mm -hmm. they want you to be successful. So they'll put you in the front of the list. Mm -hmm. If you have a new, like wow. if you put I didn't a, know that. If you yeah, put no a listing up, about that. Yeah, if you create a new listing today, you'll be at the front of the list and somebody looks up Houston. Wow. That's why your first couple of days are really important. So that's why when you first get started, we bring our prices down. We make sure the first couple of reviews are A1. Mm -hmm. Because if you mess it up and you get to the back of the list, it's really hard to get back up front. It's Very really hard. hard to get back up Very front. Very hard. So your first couple, you got to handhold. You got to make sure the guests are having a really good time. They're leaving good reviews. And then also what we do is like we bring down our prices 
in the first couple of reviews. So we're making sure we're getting booked a lot too. Yeah. So if they're putting you at the front of the page and people aren't clicking on your link, the algorithm is gonna be like, all right, this isn't a really good listing. Let me start moving this a little bit to the back. Yeah. As opposed to if they put you at the front of the page and people are clicking, 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 like, this is a good review. Yeah. Let's keep this at the front. This is what people like to see. Right. So that's what we do. We bring down our prices a lot and we make sure our first couple of reviews are really high. So obviously the review part, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you have a car business, right? Like car rental business. Yeah, I have. So I have a leasing business. Oh, leasing business. Okay. I have a leasing business with my boy. Is it like I've had it for a couple of years, but uh, we've had some issues. Okay. Um, he's had some personal issues. My, my partner's had some personal issues. But the, the, how the partnership works is like he's like the car, shout out to my man Dennis. He's like a the car, car genius. Yeah. He's like car like he's so talented. Um, and I'm kind of like like we're kind of the people that have like the, the, the clear vi- like the vision. So yeah. like people will bring us in to like say like yo like all right I have an idea and I'm the best at this. You bring people in like us to say all right this is how you do it and it has to be the best and this is how you make it the best. Gotcha. Because mm-hmm. the so. reason why I asked that, right? Because I was thinking, obviously, when it comes to reviews, there's so much competition. So someone picks your property or your Airbnb, it's like, we want it clean, right? Or uh, we want to give them water or like fresh and clean towels, whatever it may be. But do you offer like anything like, oh, like you guys could also have some brochures that you can go around the city with or here's some car rental because I thought you did cars. So I was like, maybe you could give a car out as well. Is there anything you guys do like that's different than the regular stuff? Yeah, for sure. And there's some game for your viewers right here. We have a lot of add-ons. So, you know, we work with some partners uh, down in the Houston area. We offer add-ons like car services, car pickups, car rentals, that sort of stuff. We do things like birthday packages, right? So you can get a birthday package with us, too. We'll have somebody deliver cake, champagne, birthday balloons, decorate the house before you get there, all that type of stuff, too. So we definitely do a lot of add-ons and stuff like that, too. How'd y'all make those, like, like that whole connection? I was about to ask that same thing. Yeah, so when we went down there, we met a lot of people. Um, so we have our friend Kiara that's down there. She has a couple cars that we work with her. A lot of the, and funny enough, the person that works at our building, he just opened up a bakery. So we were working with him for like that's cakes and that thing. sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we have our cleaner pick up the things like, you know, decorations. And we have like decorators. So we found people through like Fiverr to do decorations mm-hmm. and task rabbit, that sort of stuff too, to like decorate the houses and stuff like that. Yeah, bro. The more you talk to people, the more you're networking in your space, like never... Free, some free game, more free game, like never never think you know everything. So, you know, we're people that are humble enough to know that we don't know everything. Even as much as we could be billionaires tomorrow, we're, we're never going to stop learning. So, you know, it's always willing to try new things and just see what works. So, that's fire. And did y'all, did y'all make those connections from being in Houston or was it just like you were able to make those connections from New York? You know, because I'm thinking about people who's potentially getting an Airbnb long, like, you know, long distance. So, it's like if they're not in the city that they're trying to get these rentals in, then how do they make these connections? Both, bro. I mean, sometimes you could just network with people. I know, like, he's really big on, like, Facebook groups. Yeah, um, that true, helps a lot. True. Like, just joining that and just seeing some, like, we were seeing, like, sometimes I'll scroll up and he'll tell me about something, like, a big, like, issue that somebody's having. They'll put it in the group and it's like, oh, let's make sure we don't go down this road, right? Like, so sometimes it's just a matter of just looking at other people's mistakes. Yeah. And yeah, Facebook groups huge for networking. So we mean a lot of people would just do that, you know. And does anybody have a car rental business? Does anybody want to partner together? So that's probably one of the best ways to meet people without actually being physically down there. That's dope. Because I know Facebook Marketplace, we actually do the same thing. So like, I have a like, mini car rental business myself, right? So I actually do Facebook listings. And yeah. that hits. Like, you would yeah. never think it hits, mm. but it, it actually slaps. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? So, you, rent, mean, you rent cars in New York? Yeah. You've been holding Ooh. out. You've been holding out. See? Hold on. Hold on. You're going to have to talk, talk about it quick. Take the talk, take the talk part out. Hold back. Hold back. Right, right, all right. right. Hold back. Hold back. Hold back. back. Hold back. back. Hold back. Yeah, but that's why I was curious. When you said it, I was like, that's an easy add-on. But... I want to talk about something that's obviously money related now, right? Because when I was thinking about doing real estate, it comes down to money. Like, do we have enough money? Do we not have enough money? We also have a budgeting. So how much money, I guess, would you say is required to go into a property in Houston, right? Because when you do Airbnb, I'm guessing, obviously, you have to make it look nice, right? So you have to buy furniture. You, rather than getting a long term, you can get it. And it's like, all right, we're going to let the tenants kind of do their thing. With Airbnb, it's way different, right? Yeah. So can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So... Before we jump into that, I want to talk about like the three ways to get into short-term rentals or Airbnb, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the first is arbitrage. It's, arbitrage is the one that probably the least amount of people know about. So what we do is you can rent out a space, furnish the space, and then list it on Airbnb and some of these other sites, right? 
So that's the first one, arbitrage. So a lot of people think you gotta own a property to short term rent, to have it as a short term rental. Mm -hmm. You don't have to own a property. So there's people making money just by renting a place, furnishing it, putting it in on these sites. So that's the first one. Second one, co-management, right? A lot of people don't know about this one either. So what you do is like you go up to a landlord and you negotiate like, hey, I know you have a short term rental. You're making two hundred dollars a month off your short term rental. I mean, off your long term rental. Mm -hmm. Let me help you turn it into a short term rental and now make eight hundred, a thousand dollars a month off it, right? So now you do that, and then you do you offer a twenty percent fee to manage that short term rental for them. So now hands off, you're managing everything, but you're turning whatever they had as a as a long term rental into something a lot more profitable. Mm -hmm. So that's co management. That's probably the e the easiest one to get into. And it, you could really do that with zero dollars down. You just gotta go talk to people and convince them to do it, right? Mm. So that's co-management, that's the second one. And then the third one is ownership. Ownership is really like how you get to wealth, right? right? So right now where arbitrage is the fastest way to build capital, ownership is the key to generational wealth. Mm -hmm. So we're really big on ownership, that's our long-term play. Own as much as we can so we can pass it down to our kids, to our families, yep. because that's ultimately what we're doing it for, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those are the three ways to get in. And then I think your question was, how much does it cost to get into each one of these, right? Right. So co-management, again, zero dollars down, right? You go to a landlord, you say, hey, you're making this, I want you to help you make this, and just convince them to do it. And usually we ask them to furnish the property too, so if we're doing co-management. Like they would furnish the yes, property. Yes, yes. So y'all literally, like, if I own property, you ask come to me, and it's like, oh yeah, you have to furnish the property, but you also get more money. Yep. Simple as that. Yep. Simple as that. Y'all heard that, right? Everybody <laughs> wants to <laughs> buy like this, bro. Everybody, who's turning down more money? Facts. Yeah, for real. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. This is how you. It's how you set up the play. Yeah. So can we talk about that one actually? Because yeah. if that's zero down, right? So yep. how do you go about it? Like, let's just pretend like you're telling our listeners they own a property. How would you talk to them? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, I mean. We'll talk about that. I know it's a bag talk, so we'll talk about how to do zero percent on this on some some of the other ones too, for sure. Oh, okay. oh yeah, 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 yeah. So co-management, how do you get into it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was talking to an owner in Miami like a couple days ago about this, right? So what we do is we go on sites like Apartments.com, Zillow.com. We reach out to some owners that have listings that haven't sold in a while, right? And that, or they haven't or they're trying to rent places that haven't rented in like thirty days, forty five days. Like, yeah, we see you have this really nice place. We have a short-term rental business. I know you're asking two thousand dollars a month. We have a short-term rental business, and houses like this are generating six thousand dollars a month for us. Mm -hmm. Would you like to turn this place into a short-term rental business? So we set up a call. We let them know, like, hey, we want you to furnish the property, turn it into a short-term rental. We'll put it on these sites like Airbnb, VRBO, a couple of these other sites, and then we'll help you generate X amount per month based on like some other properties that we have and based on some research. I know Steph mentioned Air DNA earlier. We'll do research. We'll come in with the data, right? Here's what a, pro a three bedroom, two bath property makes in this area. Here's what you should be making, and here's what you're making now. Wow. Does it make sense to turn into a short term rental? And for him, if he's making an extra four thousand dollars a month and a three bedroom, probably furnish it like eight thousand dollars. So you're telling me I can make an extra four thousand dollars a month, and I just got to put eight thousand dollars into furnish it? You make that money sense. that quick. Yeah. You make that are back you, in two you months. Say no? yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, that's a great are you going to say no? That's dope. It, it makes sense. sense. So how many times, I guess, do people actually say no to you on that, right? Like, what's the conversion rate on that? Is it successful? Is it like you're still you're still like, you know, feeling it out? How does that go? Depends, I would say. Depends on the location because sometimes like owners, I mean, just like everybody talks, like I feel like owners talk too. And like if that's like the thing that people are doing on there and like owners will find out about it so like some people will be like if other people are doing it that they know own real estate they might, they might be more they might be more of the to the conversation but if you go to like a back block somewhere and they've never and they're not really tech savvy they don't really do things like that in the area probably gonna have more of a hard time about it they probably th will think it's too good to be true mm -hmm. and they're completely hands-off yeah they're really hands-off yeah that's fire was, yeah that's ld5 like i was i was wondering too are there certain communities that don't really allow the, like airbnb to, to be there yeah yeah, yeah. there's red zones or, especially yeah. like new york mm. for, certain, for example new york is a huge red zone yeah. and like a lot of places in like miami you can't do it and like miami you can get like a hefty hefty fine yeah really? like, oh yeah like 20 grand oh that's beast yeah and they have like a whole police system for it Mm -hmm. oh, just, wow. for just for Airbnb, or just for rentals? I guess no, just, just for, for rentals, just for yeah. just for illegal short term rentals. Oh wow! It's because it got too like oversaturated. You think, and then it was just like caused too much. It's just against the law. I mean, right. who really knows why? Like their gut, like why the why the their politics down there don't want to. Who really knows? Like yeah. it's probably like I would assume it's like 
back door hotels not wanting it to go down and they want to see all the money you know how that stuff goes like we'll never really know yeah but like yeah they have their own and they care about it enough to have their own like small police like that'll get those airbnbs and like give you a really big ticket Mm -hmm. so that's half of it what he said the the hotels are like lobbying right because they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars Mm -hmm. to build these hotels and now you have these short-term rentals coming in completely disrupting the space yeah so they're lobbying like paying the the politicians a little bit under the table like hey you should stop these short-term rentals from happening that's part of it and then other people think that it's bringing up the 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 cost of rent right Mm -hmm. because Uh, as short-term rentals right we're willing to pay a little bit more because we're profitable and in these major cities, it's bringing up the cost of rent. Mm-hmm. So people like you and I in the city, I don't know if you saw the article the other day, to get a one bedroom in the city, we need to make 160K. Is that, I didn't see that one actually, no. Yeah. It's 4K, it's 4K, medium is like 4K rent in New York right now. Yeah, I've seen oh, yeah, that. I've seen that one. 4K, right? That makes sense. Oh, yeah. 4K. That's 40, yeah. The, the medium rent yeah, is $4,000, and these landlords, they want to see 40 times. times 40 times, yeah, yeah. Uh, 40 yeah, times yeah, the yeah. rent, right? That makes sense. So people are like, yo, why is the rent going up so much? So these major cities, some people think it's because the short-term rentals coming in, taking up a lot of the rent and, and raising the rent too. So I think it's, it's partially those two things. Mm-hmm. Both of them. All right, so you said, oh, uh, I think you said there's another way that you could do zero down, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that too. What's, what's the other way? For sure. So we spoke about co-management, right? Yep. That was the second one. And that, that's the one you could easily do mm-hmm. no money down. So arbitrage, that was the first method that we talk, we spoke about. What you do is you rent a unit, you furnish it, and then you put it on these short-term websites. But uh, what we teach is how to do that also with no money down, right? So there's a lot of ways you could do it. The first is just working with the owner and negotiating a couple months of free month, free months rent up front, right? Okay. So again, you talk to the owner like, hey, we're opening a short-term rental business. It's gonna take us four weeks, six weeks to get profitable. Do you mind letting us, you know, get the first six weeks free and then take that six weeks and spread it out across the rest of the duration of the, of the lease, right? Mm. So that's one way that you can negotiate. The second is business credit. I don't know how familiar you guys are with business credit, but you can get business credit, of course, build a business, get business credit, and then you can liquidate the cash from the business credit, right? So you can use some of the things like PayPal, Square, a lot of these sites to liquidate the money from the business credit. Use that money, put the down payment on the property, and if you got a little bit more, use that money to furnish the property as well. <clears throat> but now these days, there's a lot of sites that you can furnish property with zero money down too. Yep. So we were looking at some of these things too. So mm-hmm. you can go to the, some of these furniture dealers that's like, hey, 12% zero free interest, and then you pay later on down the line. By then your business is up and running, you're profitable. Facts. And that's another way, right? So negotiate with the owner, use business credit, liquidate the business credit, and use that to pay the down payment furnish your property and get it up and running too. So those are two big ones. And if your Airbnbs are out of, out of state or out of the country and you have it under the business LLC, start writing off those flights. Yeah, yeah, Buy yeah. yeah. And, and when you when you want to use your business credit, do you have to show that your company's at a profit first before you actually could leverage that business credit? Like, because somebody who's just starting out, would they be able to, to do that method? Yeah, so when you first start out, if you have a business that doesn't have business credit, you might need to personally guarantee it, right? Yeah. Mm. So you can't create a business today and then go to Chase and say, hey, I want $100,000. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <fact. laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, so, but what you can do is if you do create a business and you go to Chase and say, hey, I have a new business, I'm gonna make sure the business pays its debts, I'll personally guarantee it, they'll loan to the business, right? But the good thing about business credit is if you have $100,000 in credit and you use all $100,000, it doesn't negatively affect your business. They're like, hey, it's a business. That makes sense. You're doing business. Right. right. So that's that's another thing. So you personally guarantee it. You make sure the money's paid back, of course. That's another way you get started there. 100%. And if the money is not paid back, then it would now negatively affect your actual personal credit, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. 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 Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead. You want to? No, no, no. I was just wondering, right? So those are two ways. And then obviously the other one is owning. Right, so you guys are saying owning is like basically when you want to get like super wealthy and you want to pass it down to your kids. Now, when you let's just assume that we're talking about owning here, right? What type of properties are y'all looking for? Like, are y'all are y'all looking for something you could fix up a little bit because it's cheaper and you can get some equity in it as well, or is it just I don't care, I'm just gonna get clean property, go at it? Yeah, he's he he, he always preaches the multifamily. Yeah, favorite yeah. type of property. Right? <laughs> okay. it's just I mean, but as as we do more and more research, like for multi multifamily just make the most sense, right? Because you can put multiple different types of people that want to rent it out mm-hmm. in one property. It's like having like three in one kind of. Yeah. So it's like it's 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 an easy kind of like I know people who live in multi units like my friend in Long Island he lives in a multi family 
It literally is just like if you go to the side of the house, go downstairs, it's a whole apartment. But you, right. but bro on the right side is having a whole another thing going on over here. Like, yeah. but everybody's paying rent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of crazy to think people sometimes live in their houses and Airbnb the second unit. Yep, yep that's yep, another yep. way of house hacking. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's, See, that's a better, he's catching that, on. That's See? Better, that's better way of house hacking. <laughs> See? He's catching on. See? Well, okay, so that's now that's tough. That's tough. How is it like with supply though? You know, like I know like multi families. There's a lot less of those than single mm-hmm. families. Like, I, I, my numbers are correct. I feel like it was like only fourteen percent of property or something like that is multis. I could be wrong though, but it's just like I know it's not too many multis out there, especially down south because that's a lot of northeast properties. So are you guys? Like having success finding them in Houston or even Miami. Yeah, there's there's a lot in Houston. There's a lot right. in Houston. A lot in Miami too. You just gotta know where to look. And then also you gotta set up automatic alerts, right? So what we do is when we're working with realtors, we're having them set up automatic alerts with like the MLS. MLS I don't know if you've heard of MLS. Yeah, yeah. So anytime something hits our criteria, we're the first to find out about it. It's in our inbox. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we're moving on it quick. So we got automatic alerts set up. And then also the other thing is like a lot more properties make sense for us because we're looking at it from a short-term rental lens, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people aren't moving on things because they're like, oh, this doesn't make sense from a long-term rental. So as a long-term rental, you typically wanna make $200 a door for a a place that makes sense for you to buy. For us, a place that makes $200 a door as a short-term rental might make $600, $800 a door as a long-term rental. So a lot more places make sense for us Multi, multi-unit wise right. that a lot of people will pass up on but makes sense for us so yeah we're seeing a lot of spots in Houston Miami that are, that are making sense yeah and everyone's different too like how what I've learned about real estate is like you find something that works for you people do different types of real estate commercial mm-hmm. like living like so for us we're and we're still building like this understanding of what like the or like not the perfect deal but the deals that we specific, particularly like and then it's just about patience. You wait it out, and when you, when a deal comes across your desk that you know you like and that you know works, move on it. Yeah. But if it's not a deal and it's a risk and it's like oh, I don't know, like we just we're, we're okay. We do so much other things. We're okay with passing on it. We're patient people. Yeah. So, can we speak on the fact? How long does it typically take for you know when a deal comes to you, right? Let's say y'all talk about it. Y'all like, oh, this looks good. This doesn't look good. Now, what does that process look like to actually close everything? Like, how long is that timeline? And then how long does it take for you guys to actually move in and start doing what you do? It depends. Because I, I, I know I send out, like, leads. I, I look at leads before I go to bed every night. I mean, he does the same. So it's like sometimes people are trying to rent out. Sometimes they're not. So it depends. I mean, but if we like something, like, we really like something, like, for example, we're looking to open some more units in Dallas and Houston, we'll probably be there next month. Wow, we'll probably be there yeah. next month. Four, fourteen days or less. Fourteen days or less. Really? Probably be there yeah. next month. But we know what we're like. Y'all know, we what you're know doing like point. we've been through. That's what I'm saying. Horror stories. We've been through those horror stories. Yeah. We talking about that yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst one? <laughs> you go one. You go one. <laughs> he already knows what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> he already knows my worst horror story. <laughs> Oh man! So, are we talking worst horror story like things we did, or worst horror Actually, story like things our guests did? I was gonna say that one for the dad talk, but you can do the guest. I just say we did. <laughs> you, he'll he'll do guest, and I'll do what we did. Oh, yeah. right. that's perfect. Call Go me. ahead. Yeah. So y'all know Texas is a carry state. <laughs> <laughs> oh nah. All right, we, we're oh. gonna have to cancel this right now. <laughs> Yo, oh. wait, wait till you hear this. Uh, wait till you hear this. <laughs> yeah. So Texas is a carry state. People have so many guns down there. That they don't know what to do with. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so we had a guest rent our spot, and he forgot three guns in the apartment. We're talking, and we're not we're not talking handguns, right? So our cleaner calls us up. Her name is Carmen. She calls us up. She's like, "Yo, Serge, there's three guns in the apartment. What do you want me to do with these guns?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a guess. Yeah. That's a guess. That's a guess. Oh. So we're talking like it was one AR-15. You playing Call of Duty? Like, what, 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 oh, this ain't, this ain't a video game. <laughs> real yeah. scopes, so yeah. like they all, real, yeah. yeah. Big boy guns, big boy guns. Yeah. So yeah, three like really big boy guns that a guest forgot in the unit, and uh, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> and they and they trashed the unit. Yeah. They destroyed the. So that was the worst horror story in terms of you guys being like the owners. Yeah. Uh, and you guys don't te- or a guest in this case. Guess. So how did that work? Like, what do y'all do to resolve it? Can you guys not talk about that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we had to hand the guns over to the cops. You know, we can't hold on to guns or anything like that. Don't recommend that to your guests. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what we had to do. 
But that that was one in a dozen. Like right. that 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 doesn't happen a lot. I mean, we do a lot of like preventative things to avoid things like that too. Mm-hmm. So happy to talk about that type of stuff. How you avoid? I was about to say the yeah, the, the bad guess. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that we do. The first is like we're really upfront about our house rules, right? So in our listing, we'll put like these are our rules, and then this is what happens when you don't follow the rules, right? Mm-hmm. So if you break something, you got to pay for it. We put like noise hours, right? You can't be loud after this time. Um, we'll put things like if you're smoking in the property, there's a $250 fee to get the odors out. So we'll put a lot of stuff up front and th- that'll deter a lot of the bad guests, mm-hmm. right? So if you're looking at a spot and you're like, oh, I'm a smoker, oh man, they charging 250 for smoking. I'm not going to book this. Not right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, not so we don't even want to deal with that. So you don't care if they say no, cause you're like, I don't care about that. Exactly. Exactly. So we only want the guests that are going to take care of our properties and, and be good guests. Right. So that's one thing that we do. The second thing is we'll get, we have a ring camera. So we have a ring camera in the front of our homes. Mm-hmm. So we'll see like, you know, if there's a lot of people coming in, more if somebody books the property, it's like, yo, there's two of us staying there. We see a, a <laughs> we see thirty people pulling up to the property. <laughs> We're like, oh no. <laughs> we gotta have a conversation at that point. What's going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yeah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all no parties, bro. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have a ring camera. (laughs) Back it up. Back it up. (laughs) We'll have a ring camera at the front of the door and the back of the property, so we see like anything that's going on that's like not supposed to be going on. Um, There's things. There's also a lot of other things you could do. Uh, There's things called like minute monitors. So what they do is uh, they're 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 sound monitors, right? Mm -hmm. So you can put this in your property, and then you can set a threshold that you don't want your property to get above a certain sound threshold, right? So you can do this to kind of avoid parties, right? So if you're like 60 decibels, it's too high. That's a party noise, right? So if, if your house is getting above that threshold, it'll send you an alert. Like, this is your sound that you didn't want your house to get above. There's something going on here. Mm-hmm. Look into this. So you'll call up the guest and you say, hey, the neighbor just called me. And he said, there's, there's a lot of noise going on. What's going on? And usually if there is a party going on, that'll stop everything right there. So things like that you can do as well. So between all those, we really don't have a lot of horror stories. That might be, in the two years, one of the bad horror stories that we have. That's not, I mean, it's bad, but in two years, it's not that bad. Yeah. Oh, I mean, they, they, they messed up the house pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. They messed up the house pretty bad. Yeah. And but, you charge them, right? Yeah, yeah. Y'all don't have to pay that. Yeah, so Airbnb looks out. So there's like three layers of protection, right? So Airbnb looks out. So Airbnb has a million dollar policy. So like if there's damages, mm-hmm. they'll insure your policy up to a million dollars. And yeah, you invoice them. You let them know like, hey, this is the condition you left our property in. Yeah. We had to pay X, Y, Z. And then you get reimbursed that way. So there's that first layer of protection. We also have insurance. We have insurance specific to short-term rentals. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people just get like regular insurance, but they typically won't cover you if these type of things happen. Cause they're mm-hmm. like, you know, we know long-term tenants didn't do this. Right. So we, we use proper is a, is a short-term rental specific insurance. So if things like that happen and you know the guest refuses to pay or Airbnb refuses to cover us, we'll send the claim to like proper insurance. And then of course you got like homeowners insurance as well. That's like the third layer of protection. So between all that, you know, we haven't taken any major L's. Yeah, no, no major L's. Somebody they broke a bed and some other. I don't know. Let's not talk about that. Broke a bed. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> broke a bed. <laughs> we saw, we saw the, the pictures. I was like, what were they doing in here? Yeah, 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 literally, but what do you mean by that? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> so what's the mistake y'all made though? So now we got to you guys. We were moving in a unit. He knows what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> we were moving in a unit and we were doing a lot of the manual labor, which I don't re- recommend. We were doing like all the mu- like we were doing all the muscle and we had this pickup truck mm-hmm. and uh, we had, uh, I think it was a couch. Yeah, it was a couch. So we had this couch and it was like hanging over the pick, like over the pickup truck like this. So imagine a big couch, pickup truck. So, we're, so I'm driving, I'm driving and like how the apartment building is set up. It's like, there's like a, you know when you go to like a rental car service and there's like it, it can only be like a certain height mm-hmm. so like we were going you have to go up like but you have to pass that to get into the parking garage because it's like one of those so we were we were driving I, I was driving and like the top of the couch just hit the pole and i hear this loud thump and i'm kind of like that's probably nothing but then i keep driving <laughs> and you hear like metal dragging across <laughs> the no, road talk it. about it bro. <laughs> yo Bro, to me, to bro, that's that what happened to me when I was moving to my place in my apartment. Yeah, bro, the U-Haul truck caught on the, like the same thing, the, like the Ooh, tunnel, yeah, dragged it. the whole ceiling off. Really, the ceiling. It yeah. might have to make these things higher, man. That's too much. Yo, that's two. That's two out of four people right here. Yeah, yeah. right. What's the odds right now? Fifty yeah, percent. What's going on? It's an epidemic right now, son. <laughs> bro, but honestly, like 
You know, we were going through so much bad luck. We were just laughing it off. Yeah. And what? Like, let me tell you something. Whatever could go wrong with us moving in these first units went wrong. Damn. Times more. We Dude. were. It was bad luck after. But now we look back on it and like we needed those experiences Facts. because yeah. now like we make sure that that'll never ever happen again. So it was honestly a blessing, bro. I'm telling you now. You'll never catch me driving any furniture <laughs> ever again. <laughs> outsource, <laughs> outsource. <laughs> yeah. outsource. Delivery, delivery. Outsource it. Yeah, y'all come doing this for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, we'll, we'll go to check on things. Like, we have a designer. Like, we'll make, we'll do, like, little stuff. But, yeah, man. Like, it, it, talked, uh, it taught us a huge lesson. That's the difference between, like, the good and the great, though. See, now, good will be like, ah, this is too hard. I'll go try something else. The yeah. great will be on some like, yo, you know what? I'm motivated, I'm gonna keep going, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna push through the rough times, because you start to realize everything worth having in your life is gonna have a tough time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you can get through the tough times, it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, be, you'll be great, because think about it, like there's one guarantee in life, well there's a couple guarantees, but one guarantee in life that people have to remember, this is for your viewers, is if you give up, the guarantee is it'll never work out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you don't give up, there's always a chance. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, you know, you said something pretty cool right there, and I want to kind of like just talk about that. So, when you guys first started, obviously you guys had one unit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you guys have to go through trial tribulations to get to where you guys are now. So, for the listeners, how many units do you guys have now, and how long did it take you guys to obviously realize, yo, this is this is working? Like, this is actually working. We could expand on this. And obviously, you guys are brothers, right? You guys talked about that. So, I'm sure. You guys probably had some arguments in that. I know, you know, me and him argue all the time, but that's my brother at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It's so, life. talk about life. that real quick. Yeah, yeah. So, when we started, so we went down to Houston. We met up with our bro brother Brian. And he was like, "Yo, you guys should look into this." So we started, and remember, you you asked the question like, "How long does it take?" Yep. We went down there within five days, ten days. We locked in our first two units. Yeah, we moved fast. Yeah. So right. we that's went crazy. down there. Beast. First time in Houston. First time, like knowing anything about the short-term rental space, we locked something in within 10 days. So we started with 10 units, uh, excuse me, two units, and then we started scaling up, went up to five, and now we're just in the process of getting a little bit more. So he was telling you he was in, he's in Dallas. We're trying to expand to Dallas. We're trying to get down to Miami. I'm making a couple calls in Miami. So we're really just trying to grow and expand the network of like where our units are right now. Mm -hmm. Got you. And, and those those early deals, right? That first deal, which method was that again? Was that through arbitrage? Arbitrage. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't, did you have to come up with a lot of capital for, for that or no? Yeah, so that unit we had to put down. So it was like first month's deposit, first month's rent. So security deposit, first month, and, and then furnishing the unit. So I think the rent was like 1600 So security deposit was 1600 First month's rent was 1600 So 32 And then furnishing the unit was like 3000 So let me put up like 6200 per unit. So like... Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen thousand all in. And you guys have a whole budget, basically, that you guys like write down everything and like see if this works. Like, because we we have like a budget calculator, right? That basically we write everything down, we input numbers, and if it's green, literally, that means good. You're gonna yeah. buy it. If it's yeah, red, no. Yeah. So you guys do that. I mean, ours is obviously long long term, not short term. But y'all do the same thing, or it's this. It's going back to what we were talking about, AirDNA, right? Mm -hmm. And this is for people that like say so like anybody that wants to start Airbnb. You got to do the numbers. So like you gotta go on Air DNA, you gotta look at the market and say, yo, how much are people making? How much the going rate out here per night, right? And you have to base it off pretty much like eighty percent occupancy for the month. So if the if the first month's rent, like he said, is, is is one number, you add that for the for the um the rent every every month, and then how much money you're gonna pay for furniture and cleaning and mm -hmm. just in case like insurance, all those all those expenses, you write it down just like a regular budget, and then you say, okay, we're probably the median is this amount every day for Monday through Friday and then the weekend's price and holidays and stuff. When you do those numbers and base that off 80%, if it's too close, it's probably not worth it. It's probably mm -hmm. not a deal you're gonna like. Yeah. But if you're talking about a couple thousand dollars, then all right, this might be, and then you gotta figure out what's comfortable for you and what's worth it to you. A thousand dollars a month extra might not be a deal we like. Fact. It, mm -hmm. But for somebody else, it might be a deal that they like and that's, yeah. and that's, com that's what they're comfortable with. So it, it varies. but. Always do your research. Always crunch the numbers, right? Because you're not gonna move into an apartment that you can't afford. So we're not gonna get into a deal that we can't afford just in case things go bad. So same thing. And so, do you guys have a, a property manager at these properties on every single one of them? Or, yeah. So, 
one thing that we're really good at is automating our business. Yeah. So we've been lucky to like automate things enough where like we are the property managers. Yeah. So we might spend like four hours a week max on, on our on our on our places. Yeah. Yeah. So we automate a lot of things where like we become the property manager. So like we automate the guest check in, right? Mm-hmm. So we use a August lock, right? So this thing called the August lock where you can, you know, make your turn your guest's phone into like the way that they check in, right? So That's you can right. like yeah, yeah. So, big gem. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So August lock is really big, right? So you put the August lock in, it's technology, and then you, you make their phone like a digital key. So, you know, they put their phone, when, once their phone is in the proximity of the of the door, they can like press a button to unlock their phone that way. So your Fire. guests could check in, That's so dope. you don't got to be down there. Like you said, most of your viewers might be looking into long, like long, long distance, distance investing, yeah, right? So they can't be down there checking every guest in, giving every guest a key, right? Yeah. So you set up the August lock once, Anytime a guest come in, they use their phone, they check themselves in, check themselves out, and you could do it that way. So we automated guest check-in like that. We automated our cleaning process. Mm-hmm. So we give our cleaner access to the schedule. Mm-hmm. So she checks the schedule, knows when she has to come in and come out. Yep. We automated we automated like repairs. So our cleaner, anytime there's something broken, then she reaches out just directly to the handyman. Supplies. Fixing, yep. So our cleaner goes and gets supplies for us. So. Whenever we're out of toilet paper, napkins, all that stuff, she gets it mm-hmm. whenever she needs to clean. So automated that as well. So we've automated as much of our business as possible. Right. We're like, we, we only need to step in on a couple hours a week. So mm-hmm. we are the property managers in that sense. We're in the process of interviewing a couple like virtual assistants mm-hmm. just to do like some of the guest communication type mm-hmm. stuff too. So what that's the- What use for that? What happened? What do you guys use for like the, to get those VAs? Like are you guys in Fiverr, online PH, like Philippines? Like, there's so many different sites. Yeah, yeah. So we've looked at all of those. Right now we're looking at like recommendations from these Facebook groups. Yeah, so he was tell, he's telling you, I love the Facebook groups. I love the Facebook People are still sleeping on Facebook. Yeah. A lot of people still use it. Yeah. For business, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I went to the Houston Facebook group, asked for recommendations of what people have for VAs. So we're interviewing a couple of VAs this week to figure out who to bring onto the team to manage the guest communications. That's dope. It's tough because, like, just to add on to the VA thing, like, we also, this is some more free game, like, make sure you when you interview your VAs, they could deal with the time schedules. Because sometimes, you know, like you said, mm. if you go to, where you have somebody in Vietnam where it's a whatever amount difference, but, like, we need our guests to be attended to at a certain time. You got to make sure that they're up for that and that they could actually, because you don't want to be able to have a guest saying, yo, nobody's gotten back to me in four or five hours. Bro, I dealt with that. I had a VA when I was doing marketing stuff. She was asleep. I was like, yo, I need you. Yeah. you. I, was, I was like, I'm losing money. Like, I actually need you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was tough. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a gem. Yeah, 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 for sure. So we've been through that. So. Now I hear that, bro. So basically, right, there, this whole episode, we talked a lot about, you know, basically your journey, how you guys got started. Yeah. And then we always basically do something special, especially as the 50th episode. You okay. know, we always say, we'd like to give our audience some bad talk. So you want to like just explain what back talk is? Yeah. So giving audience to back talk is basically just giving them gems, right? Like, what's some like great advice you could just give to them? Just just go up, say anything that comes to your heart. You want to start? Yeah, I could start. Um, so everything that I that I, that we do, you know, what I'm saying like whether it's we do a lot of different things. So like for me, what I'm passionate about is like doing what I love to do, living life and doing it, but also like not having to pay for it and making money with it. Mm-hmm. So like I like to have fun, so I want to be paid to have fun. So I host parties every now and then. Like we have a travel company together. I have a passion for travel and bringing people that look like us to travel. And mm-hmm. now we get paid to do it for that service. So it's just about like I always tell like I always tell people like, even my little siblings like do what you love because it'll never feel like work. Because mm-hmm. in every business there is, I promise you, there's gonna be days where you're gonna want to quit. And you're not going to want to deal with it. But if you're passionate about it and you truly love it, you're always going to keep going because you have a passion for it. It's in your heart to do it. So follow what you really love to do. And even if it's something like making, if you love making ice cream, like you could be the best at making ice cream in the world and become a millionaire off of it. Just because it's something (laughs) that's small. I'm telling you, the Mr. Softy brand is worldwide. I'm telling you, right? I'm telling you. So like if you have something that, that you love to do, but you don't think that you can make a lot of money off of it, you're wrong. You can make money, a lot of money off everything. You just have to be the best at it. That's dope. That's real good advice, real good advice. Yeah, thanks bro. Yeah, so what I'll say is, it's the 50th episode too, so yep. I definitely want your viewers to take action, right? Mm-hmm. So 
there's a quote that really stuck with me when I was young. You don't gotta be great to start, but you do gotta start to be great. Mm. So Fire. I don't want your viewers to watch this episode and not take any action mm-hmm. because education without taking action, that's that's not that's what we don't want, right? Right. So I hope that all your viewers are watch that are watching this episode learn something. And if there's anything that we could do to help you be successful in your journey, don't hesitate to reach out. But take that's action, fine. take action, take action. Don't let this just be entertainment without taking action. Fire. So that'll be my advice. Take action. So Fire. do you? I mean, obviously, you guys are extremely knowledgeable in this, right? Like, I know I learned a lot. I'm sure you did too, right? I'm I sure feel like I'm did. in school right now. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We've never done learning, bro. So, None of us. So do y'all no, no. like give any type of conversation? Like, if they just reach out, anything, any service at all whatsoever? Yeah. So I mean, if you want to get into the Airbnb space, just a, a, it's 50th episode, so we're gonna give you some, some, you know, some breaking news. We're gonna start coaching. The there Airbnb. it is. We're gonna there start it coaching. Is. We're gonna start giving out content. Um, and taking people on just to help them do the business so they don't have to, you know, put get a pickup truck and carry couches. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's an so, epidemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gotta come to an end. So, yeah, definitely look out for us. Um, I'm Steph Stay Flea on the gram. He'll tell you his Instagram handle when he gets to him. And, you know, we're also at oasistravel.com. Mm. Um, so, you know, follow us, see us, reach out to us on the gram. You know, we're always willing to help if you have any questions. Uh, but, yeah, look up. Stay in tune for, for more uh, content on the way. That's dope. Shout out to Bag Talk, yes, man. Sir, Serge, Ga- well? Serge Gaba official on all platforms. So happy to help however I can. Yeah, for sure, man. Amazing. Nah, this this was fire, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, this is one of my favorite episodes because yeah. this is something we've been talking about too, getting into the short term rental space. So that's a fact. We, we all go talk yeah, for yeah, a fact. Yeah, you got a Bag Talk. I need y'all to get a nah, B&B. Come on, man. Yeah, we need the right. Bag Talk B&B. <laughs> we need that. That's a fact. We need that. Nah, but we appreciate y'all for obviously coming through like from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to our audience. And for y'all, make sure you guys take action. We're going to drop all their social below. You guys should reach out to them. If you have any questions for us, reach out to us. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Plus, hit that notification bell because we drop two videos a week. And you don't want to miss it. All right? Make sure you guys <laughs> tune in for the next episode. But until then, peace. Shout out to Bag Talk, man. Yes, sir. <laughs>